Hey everybody. A couple days ago, Dev Shell asked a couple questions for Theus. Plus, I have a question of my own at the end. I'm probably not the type of Theus that Dev was thinking about really when he wrote his questions. I think he was probably thinking more of the fundamentalist type and everything like that. Uh, I answer as a Christian who rejects organized religion, and I reject it because of the way that I've seen it too often misused for personal or political gain. Televangelists, Moonies asking for money, pseudo-religious con artists, Bible bangers knocking on the damn door. You know, that kind of crap just soured my opinion on big religion a long time ago. So on to the first question here. Other than scripture or personal testimony, what evidence have you seen or experienced in your life that makes you a believer? The best way I can answer that is just to say personal spiritual experiences covering a few more decades than I care to admit. Uh, feelings, thoughts, ponderings, theological studies, personal epiphanies. I really can't explain it in 10 videos, let alone in a single response video for something like that. Yeah, go for the theologians. They make, they make a living at that kind of stuff. As far as evidence, um, if you want evidence, go to science class. Science and theology are two different subjects. Trying to evaluate theology using science is, to me, just as absurd as trying to evaluate Chinese history using French grammar. Also, Nick used the phrase, most convincing evidence. Um, I have no intention of convincing anybody of anything. This is my path. If your path is similar, that's cool. If it's different, that's cool, fine. If you don't like my path, piss off. It's my path. Get your own. How do you know that the God that you're worshiping is the right God? Short answer is, I don't. But the concept of a right God or the right religion strikes me as absurd and indefensible. The idea that one religion is better than another is ridiculous to me. The concept of God and spirituality is kind of a hazy one, and I don't think anyone has all the right answers. I think of that story, that old story, about three blind men and an elephant, and each one of them grabs a different part of the elephant. One of them touches the trunk, says it's like a snake. One touches a leg and thinks it's like a tree. The other touches a side thinks it's like a wall. All three of them are looking at the same thing, but they're looking at it from different points of view and are seeing different aspects of it. For them to get into an argument over who's right and who's wrong is kind of ridiculous. Why do creationists who believe that their God created the world out of nothing and spoke everything into existence make the false claim that atheists believe that everything came from nothing? In the interest of full disclosure, I have to admit that I despise the creationism movement, and I've been speaking out against it for years. It's built on dishonesty, and it feeds on ignorance. I think their main philosophical approach to that is, yeah, that pretty well says it. Add to that total ignorance of atheism, of science, trying to conflate atheism with science. That's the one that really pisses me off. That's a big bit of creationist propaganda that Christians cannot believe in evolution when the fact is most most Christians do believe in evolution. How much evidence that disproves scripture or refutes the existence of God would it take before you finally consider that you may be wrong? This one's only semi-relevant, really. Uh, I'm not a biblical literalist, so refuting statements from scripture would be merely a curiosity to me. For example, the story of Jericho. Archaeology has shown that the city actually existed and was destroyed many times, but it wasn't destroyed at the time and in the manner described in the Bible, so that looks like it's more or less pseudo-historic propaganda, kind of like they saw a pile of stones and said, yeah, see that? Our God did that. Disproving God, that's really not possible. It's, it's, it's not even a valid thought, because you can't prove a negative. I can't disprove God any more than I can disprove this invisible pink unicorn in my living room. 
how does your religion and your religious beliefs affect your life choices? How's it been tainted by your religion? Things you'd like to pursue, courses of study, lifestyle, partner, marriage, what you eat, what you eat? Oh well. How are they affected by your religion and your religious views? I would say as I was growing up, the main thing that comes to mind is my earlier attitudes towards sex. My approach was, thou shalt not even dare think about it, you sinning bastard. But really parallel to that, and just as important, were social ideas that really weren't directly related to religion. Uh, a lot of those came from my father. You know, he was a World War II veteran, and given his wartime experiences, he was non-religious. My grandfather was Royal Navy and later merchant sea captain, so my dad grew up in seaport towns, and their extramarital sex meant prostitutes and disease, and partaking was both dangerous and stupid. Based on those kind of attitudes, the suggestion of extramarital sex was that her family must have been low lives, so you were dishonoring them, and you were dishonoring the family, and blah 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 blah. So that was pretty much that. When I was younger, I had the impression that sex was overplayed and overemphasized in society. Putting all that stuff together, and kind of my own attitudes, and you know, personality, and all that kind of stuff, I was never really big into the lounge lizard thing, you know. Uh, slam bam, thank you ma'am, jump your bones, kick you out in the morning and never even ask you what your name was. Uh, I think that's kind of cold, treating a human being like a, they're a slab of meat or something like that. Now that's not to say I never did anything like that, but the f couple times I did left me feeling kind of cynical. You know, that's cold hearted to me and it's really kind of repugnant even today. Of course, having a long-term relationship with somebody is a totally different matter. You know, sex is part of a healthy relationship. So, bottom line all that, I guess I would say I was more reticent and less predatory when it came to sex, although not totally for religious reasons. Anyway, in closing, uh, I mentioned something earlier that the statement that my religion is better than your religion I think is both absurd and indefensible. I'd like to add something to that. And if you think the second position is any less absurd and any less indefensible, comment boxes are open and it's a free fire zone. Talk to y'all later.